The Lord be with you and also with you. Good morning to you and a very happy St. Patrick's Day. This is a service of Holy Communion being recorded at St. James's Church in Durham. And on this day of our national festival, as we give thanks for the life and example and witness of Patrick, so we pray also that as we faithfully follow in the footsteps of Christ, the examples of the saints may be emblazoned in our hearts and minds. And as we gather together to receive Holy Communion, so we pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who trust in him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord ransoms the lives of his servants, and none who trust in him will be destroyed. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Canticle of Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You that are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy Land, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The word of the Lord through the prophet. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you, for he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to all the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heaven, and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be for ever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Listen to me, you who know righteousness, you people who have my teaching in your hearts. Do not fear the reproach of others, and do not be dismayed when they revile you. For the moth will eat them up like a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool. But my deliverance will be for ever, and my salvation to all generations. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in my days of old, the generations of long ago. Was it not you who cut Rahab in pieces, who pierced the dragon? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made the depths of the sea a way for the redeemed to cross over? So the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow 
and Zion shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 96 Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. The great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, there are but idols, but it is the Lord who has made the heavens. O the majesty and magnificence of his presence, O the power and splendour of his sanctuary, ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honour and power, ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name, bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that he cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with his righteousness and the peoples with his truth. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Not I accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night, they need no light of lamp or sun. For the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign for ever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 10, beginning at verse 16. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This today, about 10 or 12 years ago, the Church of Ireland set up a new tradition for the General Synod. Instead of meeting in Dublin every year, they decided to alternate that meeting between Dublin and Armagh. And I hadn't been to Armagh, I think, since I was a child. And so when you arrive, one of the first things you see, if not the first thing, are two cathedrals sitting on hills, the two hills of Armagh, the Church of Ireland, Cathedral sitting on what's called Sally Hill, Saulach Hill, and the Roman Catholic Cathedral, both dedicated to St. Patrick on Sandy Hill. And so it was that Patrick, the slave boy who 
further educated himself in Christianity in his native land, Wales, and then in France, came back to Ireland to teach the people about the faith and asked Dyra, the king at that time, the chieftain of Ulster, to, for permission rather, to build a stone church on Donachmore in 445. And that stone church on that site is where the Church of Ireland Cathedral, dedicated to his name, is linked. And of course, there are many other places like Saul and Down Patrick, which are also connected with him. Today is a great day of celebration across the world for all those who have Irish ancestry and indeed for those who have friends who are Irish and indeed for everybody. And whatever about the nature and tone of some of the celebrations, for everybody it is a great day. It's a time when we can think back and reflect for a moment about the legacy, heritage and tradition of faith in our country. Of course, we know that it was Patrick, when passing on the faith to a primitive and pagan people, used the example of the shamrock to teach the Irish people about the Holy Trinity. And in doing that, he followed the example of his Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. Because in the Gospels, we know that Jesus, when asked questions by those who were following him, gave Answers that they could understand. Not complicated theological answers, but rather answers that resonated with them immediately and easily. Look at the birds of the air. Look at the lilies of the field. What's God like, Jesus? God is love. Here's a story to illustrate that. God is forgiveness. Here's another story about a boy who went away and squandered his inheritance and came back and the father loved him and forgave him and gave him a place at his table once again. And so on throughout the scriptures, Jesus, by example and story and illustration, taught the people about the loving nature of God. And so when Patrick plucked that first shamrock and showed it to the people, he explained the complicated doctrine teaching the church's understanding of the Holy Trinity, that interrelationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Father who created us and all things, the Son who redeemed us, the Spirit who sanctifies us. And so it was that the people of this land grew in faith. And in our own place and tradition in this diocese, we give thanks for the heritage of Patrick in passing on the faith to Finbar, to Faulkner, and to Coleman in Cloyne. And indeed, we believe that Coleman was the one who, in turn, was connected with passing on the faith to this immediate area. And so, in all of these things, the passing on of the faith, and in our day, and in our turn, we too are called to pass on the faith to those who follow us, a little bit like the Olympic torch, a little bit like the baton in a relay race. Nothing complicated, but just by example and by simplicity to pass it on. When Patrick wrote those wonderful words in his breastplate, I bind unto myself today, he was saying to all those who read his words and to us that there is nothing but God. There is no other thing to which I will bind myself other than God. There are many temptations in our world. There is a lot of anger and violence and unrest. There is a lot of dreadful behaviour towards women in particular. There is a lot of greed it taking place in, in businesses and places of influence. And all these need to be rejected so that we can follow the path of Christ. And where is Christ? Well, Patrick tells us he is everywhere and in all things, beside me, around me, and in my heart. Blessed be Patrick, and blessed be God forever. Let us pray.
Prayers of God's People. Today we give thanks for Patrick, patron saint of our land. We give thanks for how he reflected on his experience of God in the beauty of nature and in the lives of people who shared in his life's journey. But most of all, we give thanks for Patrick's call to convert the people of Ireland to follow Christ in the way of his love. Christ within us, help us to spread the word of love, peace and justice in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ in all hearts, be with your people as they share the good news of the gospel in places where your word is not known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ beside us, help us to trust in you when we meet difficulties and sustain us in our journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, who guided Patrick to the struggles of slavery and poverty, be with all people who face hardship in their everyday life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, be the light of all our immigrants as they face challenges far away from home. Help them through loneliness and the fear of the unknown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ be with all who work with the marginalised, the poor and the hungry throughout the world. Be with each of us gathered in your name and help us to be true to the faith that St. Patrick preached to our ancestors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ be with us all in these times of great challenge and difficulty. By the example of Patrick and his life, may we be strengthened and encouraged on our own journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ be with all those who have died in faith. May their rest be in peace among all the saints and angels. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace be to you. Peace be to your house. Peace be to all who are yours. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. To you we come, Father of lights, with angels and saints, where heaven and earth unite. May Jesus meet us in the breaking of bread. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks for the work of your grace in the life of St. Patrick, and that by that same grace you lead us in the way of holiness, setting before us the vision of your glory. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things, you made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. 
Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted that in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Draw near in faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive these his inestimable gifts and also daily endeavour ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of his Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning in this service of Holy Communion. And as we go out into the world, emboldened and strengthened by his heavenly food, so, by his grace also, may we walk in the footsteps of Patrick and all the saints into our country to transform it into a land of saints and scholars. God give you grace to share the inheritance of his saints in light. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.